Hallo Sven. So, we talked a lot about the mirror elements and how they can be adjusted individually. Um, so together they will actually form um, an elliptical uh, shape with a certain, uh, yeah, with certain ellipse parameters. But what about the overall ellipse? Uh, how can the overall ellipse of the selenigite be adjusted, uh, so to say, from one selenigite to the other, or from the selenigites to the sample or to the bunker area? That's a good question. So, when you look at the selenigite as we have it here, with all those mirror segments stacked after each other, and very precisely aligned to each other. Um, you can easily also see that when you look at those flexure systems, which define also the range of the movement that we can make, that we have only a very small travel range that we can do. And you will also remember that we have uh, quite a high de demand, high, high requirements on how precise we want to align these mirrors to each other. On the other hand, the, so basically, those mirrors are adjusted to each other on this carrier. But then, the sel one selenigite to the other uh, has a much lower um, precision requirement. And therefore, it was quite convenient for us to separate the two adjustments. So we have the adjustment of the mirrors to each other. That happens on the carrier. and the adjustment from one guy to another, that happens then below the carrier. And it's maybe easiest if we go to the back side of the, of the carrier and have a look. So now at the back of the Selene guide, you can see very well that we have somewhat of a, we have the real carrier and then we have created the base plate, the really rigid foundation for this that introduces an, an, an even load introduction from the feet to our super precise carrier. And when we go one further down, we have the feet. And you can already see uh, the upstream foot and then you also have a downstream foot. That's basically uh, from here to here, we have a vacuum feed through. Uh, we have uh, pillars which uh, are mounted here on this plate and that they go through the bellow on the carrier. And with that, we have a separation of the vacuum vessel to the carrier and we can basically the vacuum vessel can stand uh, stay where it is and we can move uh, the carrier by itself the movement is done by uh, such eccentric wheels as you can see here that is an eccentric uh, roller bearing if you will uh, with a very uh, slight offset uh, of the axis of, of rotation to the uh, axis of um, or to the center of the uh, circle and with that we can do very small very precise movements. Uh, we have here one wheel that basically gives us the flat of the kinematic mount. Then here on the other side you have um, two wheels and a 45 degree cone from the top so this side gives us the line of uh, the kinematic mount. And if you come with me to the downstream end, uh, basically what you see here is that this, this two, two 45 degree wedges that you saw on the upstream end, this one you have now separated over the whole width of the carrier. With that, this is uh, with this and basically this holder here, we have the point position of the kinematic mount. Now you could ask, why did we separate, why did we uh, put this out to the sides? Um, this is done because with this setup, we can basically make a kinematic mount with having four <laughs> vacuum feed-through pillars, uh, which then introduce the load to the base plate at the exact same position for, uh, for every position below the carrier and that gives us a more simple uh, um, structural situation which is more which is better controllable and with which we expect better results but now uh, that's another topic uh, those feet are then uh, meant 
to adjust the carrier to the position that we need it in a global setting. But positioning the carrier itself is not quite enough. We also need to know where it is and where it has to go. And that cannot be done with this feed. Because one of the problems that we are going to face is that our instrument is so long that it reaches amongst uh, basically two separate holes. So Selene Guide is on one hole and this here is in another hole, a diff an entirely different building, but the, the buildings are just set together and they don't have a, a basically a separation wall. But um, we expect thermal expansion of the buildings. So with that, we uh, over the annual cycles, with that, we also expect that the carriers are going to move to each other. And with that, we have to find a way in which we measure the position from this carrier to the other, or Selene guide to the other. And for that, we have some uh, fiducialization points. Uh, some are on the base frame of the vacuum vessel. You can see uh, a holder for uh, fiducialization sphere there. Um, but we also have holders for fiducializations on the carrier. And as you will remember, there will be a huge vacuum vessel that for Selene Guide 2 is very hard to take away and for Selene Guide 1 it is almost impossible to take it away because you have to dismantle the bunker. Therefore, we have created some pillars on top of the uh, carriers. Uh, you can see one over there. And then you can also see some horns on the downstream end of the carrier. Those horns and pillars are designed to be a little bit higher than the top of the vacuum vessel, so they reach out a little bit. And then we have created some sort of cones that go on top of the, of the vacuum vessel and that then cover up basically the top parts um, of those uh, of those. Uh, horn. So basically the vacuum vessel is roughly here and then we have uh, some, some cones that go over it and seal off the whole system and the cones can then easily be taken away uh, and the, those interface points, those holders for kinematic spheres can be seen from the outside and the position of the carrier inside the vacuum vessel can be measured with very little effort. So. Uh, instead of investing investing two to three days to opening up the entire system just to measure where we are here, we can do that with uh, one to two hours effort. So basically, first you will adjust the ellipse itself mm -hmm. with the individual mirrors so that it has a proper ellipse profile. And then, after this step is done, you can align the whole ellipse, so to say, by using the movement system that you have explained. That's right. And by referencing it uh, with the horns and with the pillars on, on top of the system relative to each other. That's right. And that's uh, from the first experiences that we have gained now. We expect that basically the adjustment on the, of the mirrors on the carrier is something that is going to be a very rare event. Um, annually or less, uh, but that the adjustment of the entire carrier to the world or to the global system, that's something that could happen a couple times a year. Thanks a lot, Sven. Thank you.